Hey guys, so I wanted to do a, uh, a denim to the uh, carrier operations tutorial and it's come to my attention that in the multiplayer the carrier is stationary. So you can see I have a multiplayer session going right now and the, uh, we're not moving at all. You can see the water there. We are not moving relative to it whatsoever. And we're just stationary. So what we're going to do in this scenario is a little bit different. Uh, obviously CQ1 and 2 and possibly 3 are just going to be full visual approaches at 600 feet around the boat. Okay, uh, but the, the big difference in this one is that uh, we're actually going to use uh, we're going to use vectors for any bad weather operations. So maybe CQ3 and absolutely CQ4 nighttime operations and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get on the cat and I'll kind of walk you through what we're going to do at the wolf pack. Of course, you know, other squadrons may do things differently, but this is how we're going to make BMS work for us. Uh, I also discovered that <laughs> on the carry deck, you actually turn tighter with nose wheel steering off. Nose wheel steering off seems to be nose wheel steering high. You can see I can do a pretty tight turn here. I can do a 360s basically, and then if I turn nose with steering on, it actually makes my turn slower. So NWS on is like nose wheel steering low, and NWS off is like nose wheel steering high. So if we need to make a tight turn, turn nose wheel steering off. So I'm going to press takeoff here. Good afternoon. Hornet 2-2, two two, cleared for landing. Check gear down. Hornet 1-1, one one, request taxi to mount 2. Hornet 1-1, one one, taxi clear of the runway. Yes, Hornet 1-1, one one, position and hold. Hornet 1-1, one one, you are cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, Hornet 1-1. One one. Alright, so there's the cat. Go, nose was turning off, 90% on the RPM. And I kind of walk you through how we're going to do this. Since the carrier is stationary, our waypoints actually point directly to the carrier. Uh, unlike in single player, where the carrier is constantly moving, you know, where the carrier was an hour ago is not going to be where the carrier is now. But since it's stationary, uh, we're going to use waypoint one as a semi. Uh, kind of ILS system. I mean, we can't get localizer, but we can get some indication of glide slope. And I'll show you how, we, how we'll do that after we take off here. So we'll go full power. All right, good engines, no lights on the panel. Those are starting off. All right, good cap. And gear comes up. On a one one quest, uh, in Bethlehem. land. Alright, so we're going to request ATC vectors. One, one, climb to 4,000, maintain 270 knots, turn right heading 090. Right to 090, up to 4,000, 270 knots. One, one. Alright, so we're just going to follow her vectors like normal. Not a big deal. And I get... I got the TACAN programmed in there so I can see we're three miles away from the carrier. Carrier's at 210. And I'm not going to worry too much about, you know, tracking the carrier. Uh, obviously, I can't see anything outside, so I'm just going to let ATC vector me exactly where she wants me. Maintain 300 knots. Turn left heading 035. Hornet 11. Descend to 4000. Maintain 250 knots. Turn right heading 165. Vectors to right base. Right to 165.1, down 4,000. I overshot my altitude there just a little bit, so I'm going to come back down. And it's a little bit hard to see, so what I do is I just kind of zoom in as much as I can. Alright, so we're going to keep it on waypoint 1 and uh, on level here. So this kind of works out because the carrier is not moving and you know it's not really a cheat in the sense of we don't have an ILS so this is this is what we got and we're gonna make it work I'll keep following her vectors until I get to uh, final Send to 3000. one and one went down to 3000 and you want to be kind of not abrupt uh, but uh, move of a purpose is probably the better term 
uh, when you get vectors. So, you know, if she, get, if she wants to get down to 3,000, I mean, you know, get the nose down. Don't airline fly it. Fly it like a fighter. Get it down to 3,000. There's 3,000. Altitude. Altitude. Right to 270, down to 2,000. Turn right heading 300. Zero, zero. Right to 300.11. Zero, 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 one, one. All right, there's 2000. Altitude. Altitude. Yeah, she wants me at 300. Zero, zero. I'm going to get this ALO thing. Hornet 11, one, one, turn left heading 285. Hornet 11, left to 285. Yeah, just keep your speed on the control. Don't go 500 knots because that, I mean, you're just going to be outside of the pattern and just. It's not going to work out. So I can see the carriers to my right. Right to 350.11. Alright, so as soon as she gives me that right to final, I'm going to extend the uh, gear. I guess she said 350. So there's waypoint one, okay? And what's cool about it is that is not going to change. That's exactly where the carrier is. So what we're going to do is we're going to. By the time we're three miles, uh, you can see the mileage here on the right at five miles. By the time we're three miles, we want to be down at 1,200 feet if possible. And then we're just going to um, just keep descending from there. So, so basically, you're going to fly the waypoint like an ILS. Uh, and, you know, it's not giving you localizer in the sense that you don't know if you're aligned with the runway or not, but because you followed ATC vectors, you should be directly uh, in line with the runway, unless there's a significant wind that's pushing you around. So in our multiplayer session, what we found was that uh, it, uh, I got some turbulence through the clouds here, is that the ATC struggled with uh, giving you wind corrections. Man, that is some good turbulence. Man, that's not me pitching up and down. It's just the, uh, there's three miles. Boom. There's the carrier right where the waypoint is. So it's not perfect, but uh, not too bad either. One, one, cleared for landing. Check gear down. We're at one, one, three down degree. Let's make sure the hook's down, which it's not. So. And I'm sorry, my tracker. I'm so zoomed in here, so I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. That was just so I could see the HUD a little bit better. And I can move that waypoint out of the way now. And I'll level out at 450 here. There's one mile. Hornet 1 or 400 Hornet Ball State 5.9. And then I can just go visual on the runway. Uh, the other thing that we had to do was adjust the winds. And <clears throat> because in multiplayer, the carrier's not moving. Uh, we had a severe uh, left to right cross, and you can see that in the last video that I posted. So what I did was I just dumped down the wind just a little bit, so that's not an issue anymore. I was over the ramp full power. And boom, nice, perfect landing on the carrier. Uh, the wind, we had a, a ridiculous left to right cross when at 19 knots. That's why you saw those ugly approaches on CQ3. Uh, That's pretty cool, the nose was steering. I'm glad I figured that out because there's a lot of times where you just need to make a really tight turn on the carry. You can see the nose was steering. The nose will move in there. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll get the parking brake on. So just to recap, uh, we're, we're dying down the wind a lot because it's just not practical. And I have no way, at least I don't know of a way of controlling the wind so that it points down the deck. Like right now, you know, the deck is probably facing, uh, you know, zero three zero, but I can't control the wind. It's just random. And sometimes it's variable. Uh, and we can't get it going down the deck like it normally would. And the carrier is not producing its own wind, obviously. So the way we're going to remedy that is I'm going to keep it seven knots or lower or gusting to seven 
it's pretty much going to be between two and five knots of light wind in any direction just to give us a little variety but for the most part you're not going to be blown all over the place and you should be able to get down just fine so that's our amended procedure for cq three and four uh, and then i also broke up our package into two flights so you're not going to have the issue where you know one and two are, are getting priority vectoring and then three and four are getting left out once uh, one and two request takeoff again so what will happen for you for you those of you that don't know, if you have four flight, four uh, aircraft in the package, ATC will vector one and two, but then three and four uh, <laughs> will just get dropped. I mean, they'll cancel their clearance, basically, uh, if one and two requests take off or something like that. So you'll be in the pattern forever. Uh, so to remedy that, we have two separate uh, packages uh, with two aircraft, two Hornets each in them. Okay, so that's the uh, amendment. Hope you guys uh, enjoy this video. Watch it over if you need to, just to get a, an idea of exactly what's going on. But that is how we're going to do our instrument approaches in the FA-18 Hornet in Falcon 4.33. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.